Good morning, my dear children. Today we are moving to the last lesson, magnetism. As we all know, magnets can be able to attract magnetic materials such as iron, cobalt and nickel. The first non-magnet is a piece of lodestone. It is an ore of iron which were found in large quantities in Asia Minor. This piece of lodestone has two properties. It can be able to attract small pieces of iron filings and also it sets into a definite direction when it is suspended freely. This lodestone is later on known as first natural magnet. But this natural magnet has some limitations. The attractive property of these natural magnets are very less. Hence, they are not magnetically strong enough for the use. Also, they are old and irregular shapes. Therefore, for different uses, artificial magnets are made in different size and shapes, which are bar magnets, U-shaped magnets, horseshoe magnet, magnetic needles, magnetic compass, etc. Suppose, if you take a bar magnet and suspend it freely, then you can see that it comes to rest in geographic north-south direction. The end which point towards geographic north is called North Pole and the end which point towards geographic south is called South Pole. These poles are having maximum strength in a magnet. So, a freely suspended magnet comes to rest in north-south direction. Now, if you show the north pole of another magnet near the north pole of the suspended magnet, then it will repel each other. But if you show the south pole, it will attract. That means like poles repel each other and unlike poles attracts each other. So the main properties of a magnet is it can be able to set in north-south direction. It can attract magnetic materials and like poles repel and unlike poles attracts each other. Now let's look what is induced magnetism. When an unmagnetized magnetic material is kept in contact with a magnet, then that magnetic material acquires the property of magnetism from the magnet. This is called induced magnetism. Suppose if one pole of a bar magnet is brought near small iron nails, we can see that they form a chain of nails due to the induced magnetism. Here, the iron nail behaves like a magnet so long as it is kept near or in contact with that magnet. Hence, that iron nail is getting a temporary magnetism. So, the temporary magnetism acquired by the magnetic material when it is in contact with a magnet is called induced magnetism. Let's look what happened during magnetic induction. Here, when the first nail comes nearer to the north pole of the magnet, the magnet induces an opposite polarity at the nearer end of the nail and the same polarity at the farther end of the nail. That means this nail gets a temporary magnetism. And as we all know, Opposite poles attract each other and hence the nail stick on to the magnet. The same thing repeats. That means here 
the snake induces the opposite polarity on the next nail at their nearer end and same polarity at the farther end of the next nail. This continues and hence due to the magnetic induction, the magnetic material stick on to magnets. Now, if you remove this bar magnet from the nail, you can see all these nails falling down due to gravity. That means when you remove the magnet, the nail loses its magnetism and hence they detach each other. So we can conclude induced magnetism is only temporary. So magnetic induction is the temporary magnetism acquired by a magnetic material when it is kept nearer to a magnet. And magnetic induction is always temporary and due to magnetic induction, magnetic materials attracts each other. And this magnetic induction and the attractive property of the magnetic materials will lose when magnet is removed. Now, Let's move to the next topic, magnetic field. If a magnetic compass is placed on a table, it is found that its needle rests in geographic north-south direction. But when it is placed near a magnet, the needle swings and then it rests in some other direction. That means the magnetic needle is under the influence of the magnet. As the compass is placed at different position around a magnet, the direction in which the needle rust changes such that its one end always point towards the nearer pole of the magnet. This behavior of the needle is due to the influence of magnet nearer it. The region in which the compass get influenced like this is called magnetic field of a magnet. That is the space around a magnet in which the needle of a compass rests in a direction other than geographic north-south direction is called magnetic field of a magnet. As the distance of the point from magnet increases, the effect of magnetic field decreases. Magnetic field is a vector quantity and the direction of magnetic field is the direction in which the needle of the magnetic compass rests when it is placed at that point. To see the magnetic field around a magnet, place a magnet below a sheet of stiff paper and spread some iron filings uniformly over it. Then on tapping the paper gently, the iron filings arrange themselves along a curved line. The reason is that due to the magnet, each piece of iron filings get magnetized by magnetic induction and experiences a force due to magnet and arrange itself along a curved line. These curved lines are called magnetic field lines. When a compass needle is placed at any point on this magnetic field, the needle rests along the magnetic field lines. An arrow is marked on the magnetic field lines from south pole of the needle to the north pole. The arrow indicates the direction of magnetic field at that point. Hence, 
A magnetic field line is a continuous curve in a magnetic field such that tangent at any point of it gives the direction of magnetic field at that point. Now let's look the properties of magnetic field lines. Magnetic field lines are close and continuous curves. Outside the magnet, they are directed from north pole towards south of the magnet. Inside the magnet, they are from south to north pole. Tangent at any point on the magnetic field lines gives the direction of magnetic field at that point. Magnetic field lines never intersect each other. If two magnetic field lines intersect, it means that there are two directions of the magnetic field at that point, which is not possible. Hence, magnetic field lines never intersect each other. Magnetic field lines are crowded near the poles of the magnet. Hence, magnetic field is strong at that area and they are far separated near the middle of the magnet and hence there the field strength is weak. Parallel and equidistant field lines represent a uniform magnetic field. Magnetic field lines behave like a stretched elastic rubber string. My dear children, today we have learned induced magnetism magnetic field and properties of magnetic field lines. Hope you all understood very clearly. Thank you and have a nice day.